All right, guys. So I had the opportunity to play the Gamescom build of the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero demo. And also note that in my gameplay, you're going to see nothing but true 4K 60 quality. So I hope you guys get to enjoy that while you watch it. And also note that I do have to commentate throughout the entire battle. If you don't want to listen to me talk, totally fine. You can mute the video and just watch the gameplay. And also, I did select a brand new song for every single battle. So hope you guys will get to enjoy the new tracks. Hopefully, if it doesn't get drowned out by my voice. So the song that's playing right now is Elite Squad. And I also selected different characters that were obviously new to the demo. So I'm using boot tanks and I'm fighting off against second form cell. You guys saw me get some combos off against him because I was trying to like relearn the ropes of playing the game. It's been a while since I played the demo, but I also want to make sure that I show off some moves. So I threw out one of Boo Tanks' moves against uh, Second Form Cell and I managed to wipe him out. But the move I used was Galactic Donut Volley. It looked pretty cool. But at this point, I want to make sure that I show off as much as I possibly can of this character but also still hopefully being able to get some combos off. So I go all the way to the sparking state, I charge a key blast and throw it at Buhan, and then I fire off my ultimate blast, and I connected the hit. I thought it was going to uh, potentially quote unquote miss because I thought it was going to block it, but no, he took the whole hit, so I'm not complaining. Anyway, Buhan ends up throwing out his super Kamehameha, but you know, we take the hit. I'm not really worried about it. And at this point, I figure that I've used Boo Tanks enough. There's just one move I haven't used yet, and that was Special Beam Cannon. So I decided to just throw it out, and somehow I managed to connect the hit. So not tripping about that. But afterwards, since I've already showed off all of his attacks, I swap into Kid Boo. Now, I look, th this is Dragon Ball. There's really no game where Kid Boo is a bad character, and this game is no exception. So uh, I land Mystic Combination on Buhan, but th this is just his, like, you know, super attack, right? When we get to the combos, you're going to see that Kid Buu and the way he fights is just as good as it always has been. So, Ultimate Gohan goes in. I'm comboing Gohan now. His, you guys can see it, man. Kid Buu's combos are ridiculous. He's so fast. He's so strong. His combos string together very well. So I can definitely tell that if you want to use a powerful character that's fast and, well, powerful, Kid Buu's definitely it. Anyway, I threw out, uh, you know, Kid Buu's coming at me. Huh? I, I missed, but I at least got to fire it off, and that's really what mattered to me the most. Uh, afterwards, I get all the way up to the sparking state because I do want to make sure that I at least land Planet Burst once. So I threw out a charge Key Blast, and then I threw out Planet Burst against Ultimate Gohan. And this ultimate has a long charging sequence, but I understand it because it was kind of similar to the anime. But even though I used it, Gohan blocked it. So unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to connect the hit. But that doesn't mean that we can't try again. But yeah, Gohan ends up in this working state and uses Violent Rush, and I'm just getting pummeled into oblivion, right? Then afterwards, he grabs me, which gives me a bit of breathing room to actually, hopefully, land another planet burst. But, you know, hopefully have it connect this time. So I'm charging up with Kid Buu. And if there's one thing I do want to point out, it's I love that when Kid Buu is getting closer to the sparking state, he starts beating on his chest. Like, we don't get, like, those type of details anymore in, like, the Dragon Ball games, right? So it's cool to see something like that in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Anyway, so I'm back in the sparking state. I combo Gohan a little bit, back up after, you know, throwing up some uh, key blasts, and then afterwards I throw a Planet Burst again. But this time, it does connect. And, of course, it deals all the damage, right? This is Kid Buu. It eviscerated Gohan. Not really, but it wiped him out. Again, guys, this is only a taste of what you guys get to see in this video. I'm so excited to show you guys more. But anyway, on to the next battle. And here we are in the next battle. So the song you're listening to right now is Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Battle Version. I believe in this gameplay, I actually forgot to change the song. But hey, you know, still a good song nonetheless. So I'm using Guldo and I'm fighting off against Kid Trunks. I decided that this time around, it's probably important for me to start showing off the Ginyu Force because apart from Birder, the rest of them are new to the demo. So even though I know people may not really care about Guldo like that, I'm gonna be honest with you, don't sleep on Guldo. His combos string together very, very well. It's It has a very simplistic rhythm to it. So it's easy to like kind of string together. Anyway, I tried using one of Guldo's moves against Trunks, but unfortunately I, I missed the attack. It is what it is, but at least I got to see how it looked like, right? But afterwards, I noticed that Trunks is starting to combo me, and in my head, I'm like, you know what? It would be really, really cool if I could get uh, Sonic Sway off with Guldo just because of how short he is and try to see, you know, seeing him dodge and whatnot. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it off. But either way, uh, after a little bit, I start comboing Trunks again. And I know that I need to start showing off moves, but I also want to make sure that I combo, right? Because I don't want it to just be how it was uh, with my gameplay from Summer Game Fest. So I focus on landing some hits on Trunks as well. And later on, you guys are going to see me use a few more moves as well. But anyway, again, I continue on comboing Trunks. And then I throw out some Key Blasts. I continue comboing again, and at this point, I'm like, you know what, apart from comboing, especially because Trunks is about to die, I really do need to try to land another attack. So I start backing off, and I start charging up, and then I throw out, uh, was it, Full Power Energy Blast Volley, which, it's it's weird, because in this game, it's kind of just like thrown out all at, all at once, instead of it being like shut out multiple times, which is so cool nonetheless. So I get to the sparking state, the opponent swaps into Goten, and since Goten's kind of swinging all over the place, I decided to throw out my uh, ultimate, which was Goldo Special, but unfortunately, I missed. Now, does that mean that we won't be able to see it? No, but I want to make sure that I get that off first before I end up swapping characters. So I get back to the sparking state and go straight for Goten. Goten's just flying, bro. This crap's crazy. So anyway, I catch up to Goten. I combo. I stagger him this time. And then afterwards, I throw out the ultimate attack and it does connect. Which, I, I'm not gonna lie, this move looks nice. So, I land that on Goten, and now, since I'm good on Guldo, I decide to swap into Jace. So, one thing I do want to point out is, the Ginyu Force have the most unique charging animations out of any of the characters in the Dragon Ball Working Zero demos, like any of them. But anyway, so, Jace is in, I end up throwing out Crusher Ball, Unfortunately, Goten ended up blocking the attack. So I decided since, you know, I already used it, regardless of me landing it or not, I'll try to at least uh, show off more of his moves. But of course, not excluding the fact of me trying to land some combos. So I start comboing Goten a little bit. Uh, he's blocking all the hits. At this point, I really do just want to, like, again, get as much damage off as I can against him because I still want to show off, like, the other character that I have in store. So I start comboing Goten again. And one thing you guys are going to note is in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, you are able to do your rush in multiple times. Now, I believe it's up to two times before um, when you land the final hit, you'll end up sending the opponent flying. So anyway, since I used Crusher Ball already, I end up throwing out Full Power Energy Wave, which remember, each character fires off that move differently because they have their own type of pose and whatnot. And then afterwards, I now want to try to land his ultimate attack. So I vanish out of uh, Goten's, I believe it's called like Boulder Toss or something along those lines. And then I get to the sparking state with Jace. So I charge in and luckily since it's a tracking move and Goten wasn't blocking, I connected the hit and land the purple comet attack, which again, this move looks great. And it looks even better in 4K60, trust me. Actually seeing this move, while playing it like in person was incredible so we wipe out goten and i'm just ready to swap in as you guys can see who the next character will be but uh one thing about this build is when you defeat an opponent you're automatically locked off for whatever reason i don't know if that's intentional but that's just how it is so trunks is in he ended up transforming into super saiyan i ended up uh swapping into raccoon so now i know that i need to at least land a few more hits to, you know, show off the character, but also showing off combo potential. So I start comboing uh, Trunks, and then I fire off Eraser Gun, and it dealt massive damage against Kid Trunks. I mean, he was pretty much about to die at this point, because he wasn't earlier. So at this point, I, I'm trying to back off so I can charge, because I'm running out of time, and I really do want to at least show off some more moves, but Trunks is literally about to die. So I rush in after getting to the sparking state, and I just hit Trunks, he ends up being KO'd. So now... We have the final character, which is Gotenks. Now, again, like I said, when you defeat a character, you're automatically locked off. So I had to actually search by pressing R3, and that's how I was able to lock on to Gotenks, even though he was right beside me. Anyway, I throw uh, Raccoon's ultimate tank, the Ultra Fighting Bomber, and it deals tremendous damage against Gotenks. But now, there's one more move that I have to use no matter what, and that's Raccoon Grenade Bomber. So I get to the sparking state just to be safe, and then I just rush in against Gotenks, I attack a little bit, and with two seconds left, I just throw out the move, because it literally doesn't hurt. And that's that. We ended up winning with the Ginyu Force, which this, this victory screen is crazy. But again, that's it for this battle. On to the next. In this battle, I wanted to make sure that I at least got a match between Gogeta and Vegito. So we also have their unique dialogue happening right here. 
But the song that you're also listening to is called Ascending Hope. And this is probably one of my favorite tracks so far. Because it's just like an uplifting type of, you know, track. Anyway, so like I said, it's a battle between Vegito and Gogeta. I picked this specifically because I wanted to see if there was some sort of quote between them. And there is. So I'm using uh, Super Vegito. Now, one thing I noticed with Vegito, apart from his combos being really, really good, is Final Kamehameha is no longer his ultimate attack. It's now a super, which is actually crazy. And his old super attack is now his ultimate attack. So uh, Beam Sword Slash is now his ult. But anyway, I throw out the super attack version of Final Kamehameha. Unfortunately, Gogeta got out of the way. But then he threw out Super Kamehameha, and I got hit by that, which is not good. So, anyway, the main thing I want to do is just try to fight off against uh, Gogeta. But I do manage to get this Clash off. Now, the thing is, I wasn't prepared for it, and I didn't know what exactly triggered it. But I think I understand what it is. So, if you guys remember in, like, the Raging Blast series, where uh, maybe you would, like, clash against your opponent, you guys would, like, teleport out of the way and you had to press a specific button before your opponent. I think that's what that is. But I'm at least glad that I got to experience it. So anyway, I take out Super Vegito and I throw in Team Gohan. So Team Gohan, again, my favorite character in all of Dragon Ball. And ironically, he's up against Super Saiyan 2 Team Gohan. But I also wanted to make sure that I got Team Gohan's moves out of the way. So I end up throwing out Energy Blast Barrage and I did land the attack against uh, the opponent, which is great. But I also want to make sure that I at least land his ultimate attack, which is, of course, Super Kamehameha. So, Gohan ends up charging up towards me. Since I'm in the sparking state, I decided to just use Violent Rush. There's no reason not to. I stagger him a little bit, and I start backing off because I was hoping that he was going to use Father's Son against me so we could have a beam struggle. It didn't happen. So, I end up throwing out Super Kamehameha, and it did connect against him, which is why uh, Super Saiyan 2 Team Gohan is locked off. So, I start charging... And at this point, I need to make sure that I try to end him off quickly because I do also want to transform with Team Gohan as well. So I start comboing a bit with him and then I end up like knocking him out mid combo when I was actually trying to test something like I wanted to see like how far like uh, those hits would go. Anyway, so I'm still in the sparking state, but I end up transforming into Super Saiyan. And there's a particular reason why. I transformed into Super Saiyan because I want to use Raging Masento. So I end up using it against Gogeta when he came back in. And it's weird because it starts off with two uh, projectiles, which I believe both of them need to connect first before you get the final blast of Masenko against the opponent. Anyway, so I start charging more key. And I'm more focused this time around on trying to get Gohan's moves out. So I end up using his uh, rush in move. It was a super assault combo. Which is actually weird because um, I'm pretty sure I actually did connect with Gogeta, but it didn't register. I don't know why. But uh, I wasn't really also I wasn't really focused on using Super Kamehameha because it's Super Kamehameha. I've seen it a lot of times. But uh, apart from that, though, there is one other thing that I know I want to do, and it's transform into Super Saiyan 2. So I am getting bodied a little bit by Gogeta, but I'm not worried about none of that, right? This is Team Gohan. He throws hands. He throws hands. So anyway. Gogeta's still comboing, and if there's one thing that I do want to say, it's... I know people were kind of worried about uh, Gohan's model. It's actually not bad. Like, I think the model looks perfectly fine. So, I end up throwing out a Super Assault combo again, and this time, Gogeta blocked it. So, now, the only thing I want to do is land that move. Because, again, we've seen Super Kamehameha just with other characters before, but Super Assault combo is something we haven't seen. So, I throw it out one last time, and this time it actually connects. So, I end up wiping out Gogeta with the move, and with less than a minute left, I need to make sure that I, you know, try to use all the forms of Gohan while I can. So, I transform into my favorite form for Gohan, Super Saiyan 2. So, now... I just want to be able to land some combos and also land, uh, you know, some supers and hopefully father son. But there is one thing I want to point out for you guys. In Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, Team Gohan in general does not have his spinning fighting style, which is unfortunate because it's such a cool fighting style. But I mean, I'm not really complaining either way. Team Gohan still Team Gohan. So uh, I charge after landing a few combos off against uh, Super Buu. And at this point, with time running out, I'm probably not going to land father-son, so I just want to be able to land something. 
So, with 18 seconds left, I tried to get a few more combos in before I really just needed to land a move. So, I'm vanishing all over the place, trying to combo Boo, while also not trying to get bodied myself. But, again, we have no time left. So, I get out of the way, charge my key, and then, with a few seconds left, I throw out Explosive Rush. And luckily, I was able to connect the move. So, again, Explosive Rush is supposed to be Quiet Rage, but still, it's the exact same move. I'm just happy it's in the game. But... Anyway, on to the next battle. All right, so in this battle, I wanted to focus on the more obscure characters. So I'm using Videl, and with Videl, I'm fighting up against Raccoon. The song that you guys are listening to is called Believe in Tomorrow. So the one thing I want to point out is in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, you know, obviously, quote unquote, weaker characters will obviously struggle against quote unquote, stronger characters. But I also want to point out that that doesn't mean that just because you use a weaker character, you're not able to put in work against a stronger character because Videl is actually really, really fun to use. So with Videl, since all of her moves are rush in moves, literally every single one, I focused more so on combos with her, right? But there was also one thing that I wanted to test out, which is why I continuously kept on breaking uh, Raccoon's guard. So in Tenkaichi 3, Videl was not able to vanish after a combo. I tried it multiple times and she just wasn't able to. So in this demo, I was trying to see if maybe they changed that and it's actually still the same as it was in Tenkaichi 3. So if you're using Videl, don't expect to vanish after a combo. Like you can probably like jump and follow up, but and also you can, you know, uh, chase them, but you can't really vanish afterwards. Anyway, so I continuously combo against Raccoon now, again, like I said, Videl is a quote-unquote weaker character against the likes of Raccoon, but still, she's able to hold her own. Also, I land the Sonic Sway against Raccoon, which is just nice, especially because that's probably not something that would normally happen. But uh, unfortunately, as I'm comboing with Videl, Raccoon ends up landing Sonic Sway on me. So there's that. Anyway, I start noticing that Videl's health is getting really low, so I need to try to land some moves. So I start charging up to key, and I make sure that I get up to the sparking state because out of all moves, there is one move in particular that I want to use, and that is Videl Rush. So I end up throwing out Videl Rush, and it connects against Raccoon. This move looks nice. I'm telling you, man, Sparking Zero has gone above and beyond with how these moves look, and I'm all down for it. So. I land Videl Rush, and at this point, I want to make sure that I land her other moves as well. Especially because uh, there is one move in particular that uh, I don't remember if, if it was in Tenkaichi 3, because I don't think I tested it out, but uh, it's in this game, and I just wanted to use it. So, uh, with the amount of key that I had left, and with uh, the amount of health that Raccoon has left, with him popping this move, he was wide open. So I throw out Videl Kick, and quite literally, she kicked his face. That was, that was it. It was funny. <laughs> and that's that so we land that move now there's only one move left to use with her but of course like i said when you defeat an opponent you're ended up you know you're locked off when it comes down to the other opponent but um i also realized that even though i do want to use her other move i really do need to start using other characters so i end up throwing out spobovich and one thing i'm really happy about in this game is spobovich is much faster than he was in Tenkaichi 3 in Tenkaichi 3 he fought very slow because you know he's a big bulky character but no in this game his fighting style is much faster and i'm definitely happy for it because he it, it was really slow in Tenkaichi 3 anyway i'm fighting off against vegeto i get grabbed twice by him but i end up rushing back in and i do get a clash off i timed it right this time but there is something that i do want to point out the camera glitch that i experienced last time did happen in this demo as well but no this is just a demo it will be fixed by the time the full game comes out that's why this is a demo anyway i continue comboing with spepovich but vegeto ends up going out so boo tanks is now in and i'm still comboing because i just want to make sure that i use as much of this character as i can because again he's an obscure character so i end up comboing boo tanks but I wasn't able to land the final hit because uh, Wu-Tang's reached the ceiling. Makes sense. So, I end up using uh, one of uh, Spolpovich's moves against Wu-Tang's, and I'm glad that I uh, landed the attack because we're running out of time. So, again, if I wasn't able to land that, I don't know what I was going to do. But the move I used was Mad Banquet. Uh, I believe I did use Berserker Crash in this game. Uh, I don't remember if it was in like this footage, but if there is one thing I want to point out about Berserker Qu uh, Crash, it's the fact that in Tenkaichi 3, 
you were able to kind of control where it went. In this game, I tried to control it, and I wasn't able to. It's just like a straightforward charge now. So, you know, take that however you will. But now that I've used Berserker Crash and Mad Banquet, there's only one move left, and that's Majin Buu Resurrection. So, there's no time left. The opponent ends up swapping. I literally just don't have enough time. So, I throw the move out, and I miss, which is unfortunate. But with 15 seconds left, I try to make sure that I at least charge up to the Sparking State before it's too late. So, hopefully, I can land the move against Vegito. So, Vegito's attacking. I'm in the Sparking State, so Key Blast don't affect me. And since he's close by, I just throw the move out. But this time, I land it. And of course, Yamu pulls up, and yeah, we steal energy for Majin Buu while, you know, dealing damage to Vegito. That's about it. And of course, with a few seconds left, I use the uh, move Berserker, but I mean, it was kind of too late at that point. But yeah, Spobovich is actually a lot of fun in this game, and I think you guys will enjoy the character when you get it, you know, your hands on him later on. But anyway, on to the next battle. In this battle, I wanted to make sure that I started using Super Buu a bit more, so... I specifically chose Super Boo against Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks just to see if they had unique dialogue, and of course, they do. So, we do have Super Boo here, and I managed to land a few hits on Gotenks, again, just trying to get a feel for his combos and whatnot, and then afterwards, I wanted to use one of his moves, so I charge up my key a bit more, I back off, and I use Assault Rain, but unfortunately, the tree was in the way, so you guys weren't really able to see it, so... I sidestep and then I throw the move out again. So hopefully this time around you guys will actually be able to, you know, see how the move looks like. Even though Gotenks did block it a little bit, but I mean, it's still connected, so it's not too bad. So Gotenks charge all the way to the center of the stage. I don't know why. So I take advantage of that moment by chasing him down and then trying to combo afterwards. And then of course, Gotenks lands some hits. Then he uses Vice Shout on me, which stuns me for a little bit, but he made a mistake by hitting me and then trying to follow up with Die Die Miss Barrage. So because of that, I was able to block that attack. Anyway, I still want to use more of Super Brew's attacks, so I use uh, Majin Beam, and I turn Gotenks into chocolate, but instead of eating the chocolate, we punch it all the way to the other side of the map, so there's that. Anyway, I get all the way to the Sparking State, and I was going to pursue Gotenks, but they swapped into Raccoon, so uh, I at least decide, you know what, regardless of if Gotenks is in or not, I want to land the move. So, with Raccoon in, again, I'm in the Sparking State, so those key blasts are not really going to affect me. I end up using um, one of my uh, moves on him to stun him. And then afterwards, I throw the Revenge Death Bomber against Raku. Because again, I'm already in the state. I don't want it to go to waste. So I use it. And again, it eviscerates Raku. It deals really, really good damage. Like, well over half of his life is gone, man. So anyway, I decide this time it's time to swap to a different character. So I swap from Super Boo to Goten. And the reason why I really want to use Goten is because um, I, I was able to practice a little bit with him uh, beforehand. And there was just one thing about Goten that I really, really liked, which you guys will see in just a bit. Uh, I, actually, I won't even talk when it happens so you guys can actually hear it. So anyway, I'm using Goten and I start comboing against Gotenks. And I just want to make sure that I'm able to like deal enough damage to hopefully be able to get rid of him. But also so I don't have to really worry about having another character still be alive because I'm trying to win. So, Raccoon ends up coming back in, and then I charge for a bit, and then I get to the Sparking State. And of course, you see, his uh, ultimate attack is, of course, Super Kamehameha. But there's a reason why I really wanted to use Goten. I said Kamehameha again. And that was why. So, it's, I'm sorry, that's adorable. Just the fact that Goten never knew how to pronounce Kamehameha properly, that's, that's adorable. So, um, afterwards, I transform into Super Saiyan with Goten, and I start attacking Raccoon because... Now that I've seen his Super Kamehameha, I want to see Goten's uh, ultimate blast move in Super Saiyan, which is a new move called Double Kamehameha. So I decided to throw it out, and I'll let this play out for you guys to hear. Except I actually didn't land it on Raccoon. So uh, apart from all that though, uh, the move is actually really cool. You guys will get to see it in this gameplay. But again, it is a new move compared to what it was in Tenkaichi 3, because in Tenkaichi 3, it was Bro's Kamehameha, not this time for Goten. So, uh, Raccoon does that move, but for whatever reason, he, he stopped moving, so I decided to take advantage of the moment, and I used the move. Now you guys will get to see it in its full glory. Hey, 
Yeah, so now he has double Kamehameha, and he pairs up with Trunks this time instead of Gohan. So now that I've used Goten a bit, I swap in to Perfect Form Cell specifically. So, Perfect Form Cell, I mean, it's finally we're able to play a Cell in general, which is nice. His combos feel really, really good. Uh, there is one thing I am sad about, though, and it's the fact that um, in Tenkaichi 3 and even in Raging Blast, when you jump in the air, if you hold the attack button, you can fall down while landing and attack. In Sparking Zero, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It's if you jump in the air and you press the attack button, you actually start your combo stream. So, uh, I, it's sad because I was using, um, like, I was practicing on Tenkaichi 3 before I even got to play the demo, and I was really liking, like, how Cell's uh, move was when he jumped in the air, fell down, and, like, landed attack because he lands two hits instead of one. But in this game, that's just, that's completely out. So, it is what it is. Anyway, I get to this marking state because I do want to make sure I land his ultimate blast with 45 seconds left. You've backed me into a corner. Forcing me to use a barrier. Cell is so cool, bro. Like, y'all can't deny it, bro. Cell is one of the cleanest characters, just in general, just for Dragon Ball. So, uh, right there, uh, everything that I was mentioning earlier about jumping in the air and trying to attack, I tried it right there. And you guys saw it, it started my combo stream. So, anyway, I've used um, his barrier, I've used Barrage Death Beam. At this point, there's not much time left, and there's only one more move left to use with Cell. So, with that in mind, I throw out Super Kamehameha, and I actually land that on Jace. And that ends the battle. Again, these characters are really unique, man. You guys are going to love playing as them when this game drops. But, anyway, on to the next battle. For this final battle, I decided to keep the song on Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Battle version because I felt it was fitting for this particular scene. Of course, we're fighting off against Perfect Cell. Not Perfect Form Cell, Perfect Cell. But the reason is because... You guys already know I had to redeem myself with Super Saiyan 2 Team Gohan. So, we are using him again, but this time, hopefully, I'll make you guys a bit prouder than I did the last time when I used him, because I couldn't even use Father's Son. Also, this quote is really, really cool. Like, his, uh, you know, dialogue against Cell. So, this time around, I've already used uh, Gohan's moves. The main one I'm just trying to land this time around is Father's Son. So, for... A majority of the battle against Cell, I'm just comboing. But I do try to land other moves as well within the mix. But also, I'm starting to, like, you know, understand the nuances of, like, how characters function and whatnot. So, this time, I felt Super Kamehameha because I did not use that when I first used Super Saiyan 2 Team Gohan. But now that I've used it, like, I'm like, you know what? Let's see if we can land a few more combos. And uh, if we're able to land Explosive Rush, sure. But the main one I want to use, the main move anyway, is Father Son. And with Cell, like, getting close to, you know, being dead, it's only fitting that I end him with that move, right? But, of course, Cell's putting up a good fight. I do want to point out that the AI in this demo is significantly stronger. And I mean by a, a large, just a huge mile, right, than the previous builds. So, uh, I end up throwing out a charge key blast, and I try to use Explosive Rush uh, afterwards, but he blocked the hit. It is what it is. I send uh, Cell flying, and then I tried to, like, uh, finish off the combo, but I realized if I do that, I won't be able to end him off with Father Son. So, I get all the way up to the sparking state, and then I start, like, backing off, because, again, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that Cell would charge maybe some sort of blast so I could get a beam struggle off against him. He didn't. So, I throw out a charge key blast, and I throw out Father Son, and, well, you guys can see the rest. There's a reason why he's called Goat Han, all right? Well, you know, at least when he was a teen. Anyway, so now that I've used Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan, I locked on to Super Boo, who was behind me, and then I swapped into Ultimate Gohan, because, of course, Super Boo fought Ultimate Gohan. Ultimate Gohan's combos feel phenomenal. Like, I, I don't even know where to begin with that. But anyway, I throw a Charge Key Blast, and I throw a brand new move that Gohan never had in the older games, because he had Super Explosive Waves, so... It's actually cool to see that they're actually making some of those changes. It's actually pretty cool. So, I start trying to combo Super Boo, but Super Boo's out here trying to block everything. But again, like, his combos feel... They feel structured. Like, they feel, like, weighty when they actually do connect. So, uh, I don't know how this move connected on me. Maybe it's because I was, like, right beside him and it has a huge hitbox. 
But um, still, anyway, afterwards, I continue to try to combo Super Boo, and I'm just landing like combos left and right. But of course, I do want to make sure that I land more moves. I've already used Fierce Combination. I use Power Up to the very limit so I can get straight to the Sparking State, because since Super Boo's about to die, there's only one thing left to do. Land Burst Rush. Yeah, so Burst Rush looks completely different than it normally would, right? Which, again, I'm not complaining because it still looks good to me personally. So, now that I've used Gohan and I've seen all of his moves, I throw in Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Because Kid Buu is in, right? And I want to make sure that I get some, like, effective gameplay with Gotenks. So, I throw Die Die Miss Mirage, some of the moves hit uh, Buu, some of them missed and hit the stage. It is what it is. Kid Buu, again, I've already explained how powerful of a character he is. He really always is, no matter what game he's in. But, um, I start comboing a bit with Gotenks. I was going to pursue him, but I ended up flying behind him on accident, which it is what it is. But I sent him flying, and at this point, I'm like, okay, I got to make sure I land some moves. Although, one unfortunate thing did happen. So, we are in the sparking state. You can see the move, Charging Ultra Boo Boo Volleyball, is his uh, ultimate blast. But, the thing is, I did put Kid Boo in a position where the move would connect. But when I used the move and I charged in, you can see I literally landed on Kid Boo, but I don't know why, but the move didn't register. So uh, I, I don't know what was going on with that, but it is what it is. So I just decide, you know what? I'm just going to just try to combo. There's like 30 seconds left. I just need to be able to land some moves and go from there. So I use finish sign that obviously buffs up uh, Go Tanks' stats. And with less than 30 seconds left, I just want to make sure that I start comboing. And if I'm lucky, I can land a move. So, I charge up a little bit because I want to use Victory Bazooka. So, I throw it out, but Boo blocked it. He still took chip damage, but he blocked it nonetheless. So, I sidestep, and at this point, there's really no time to use another move. So, I just try to combo to end it, and I end up beating Kid Boo. But, that's pretty much it for my gameplay, guys. Again, you guys are going to love this game when it comes out. It's absolutely incredible. But... I do want to know what you guys think about this gameplay in the comment section below. But with that being said, I'm Minikuba, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.